Good evening and welcome to the December 1st, 2020 uh, Superintendent Contract Subcommittee meeting. Due to the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic and state of emergency, on March 12, 2020, Governor Baker issued an executive order temporarily suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, um, GL Chapter 30A, Section 20, pursuant to the order, public bodies are temporarily relieved from the open meeting laws requirements that meetings be held in public places open and physically accessible to the public. So long as measures are taken to ensure public access to the body's deliberation through adequate alternative means. This meeting will be held, will be held and will be accessible to the public via Brockton Community Access, Brockton Public Schools website, www.bpsma.org, YouTube and Comcast channel 12. The public can also access this meeting via this link, www.youtube.com forward slash the Brockton channels. All right, I'm gonna call the roll to establish a quorum. <clears throat> okay. Uh, Mayor Sullivan let me know he'd be joining us, but just a little late. Uh, uh, so uh, D'Agostino, I'm here, yes. Ms. Asak? Here. Okay, Ms. Mendez is not with us. Mr. Minicello also reached out and let me know he'd be running late. Uh, Mr. Rodriguez. Here. Yeah. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Tim. Mr. Sullivan. <laughs> Tim. Tim Sullivan. Please say, please unmute and say yes. Okay. Um, he may be having a technical issue. That's all right. We've got four. And so we are, uh, a quorum has been established. I know Mr. Sullivan is there. Oh, Tim, there you are. Can you give me a yes? Yes. Yes. Thank you. All right. We have established a quorum. Uh, the agenda for the evening, we really, uh, we have two items, discussion on evaluation criteria and any other business that needs to come before this subcommittee. Um, so on the topic of uh, evaluation criteria. Um, we have um, with us tonight uh, Dr. Michelle Connors and Mrs. Carrie Kopp. Uh, both have been working with the committee um, on the evaluation process. I know there were some questions um, about the evaluation, the tool, and, and just, you know, uh, some of the criteria. So um, I had asked them to join us to provide uh, some members of the committee that were kind of having a hard time with this, some additional uh, uh, guidance um, and, and insight on this. So um, with that, um, if, um, you know, Mrs. Kopp, if you wanted to take over and, and kind of, you know, give us your, this kind of summary that you and I had talked about. Can't hear you. Ma'am. There we go. Oh, you can't. No, try again. Can you hear me okay? Ah, there we go. All right, thank you. I do this all day long too, and somehow I can't manage to do this right now. Um, I've talked to a few of you over the last couple of weeks concerning some of the questions you've had um, about um, evaluating the superintendent. And I know some of you have already completed um, the evaluation, but I also know that there are some new members who might have some questions. And when I spoke to uh, Mr. D'Agostino, it was clear to me that, you know, obviously we're in a very unique situation with the superintendent during this particular cycle. He came into um, the role um, on a permanent basis, not until late in the year. And then, um, you know, his the, the plan shifted as far as the district was concerned with regard to the COVID-19 response. So what I what I want had um, spoken to Mr. Diagostino about and really wanted to sort of bring to the attention of the committee was that you are you are evaluating the superintendent on on the, his goals, the achievement of his goals 
the standards and an overall rating. But it's really important for you to think sort of holistically about what has um, happened this year and what has happened over time and realize that that with regard to the superintendent, if the committee is, is um, not in a place where they are looking to um, move the superintendent out of the district or think about that as far as um, not renewing a contract, then you might have a different conversation than what you're having right now. And the conversations that you should be having right now is, is about where does the superintendent fall in terms of proficiency, in terms of meeting the standards? Um, because as I understand it, and as the conversations have come with committee members, is that you're not in a position right now where you're talking about um, an unsatisfactory rating or anything that would um, indicate that the superintendent is not uh, performing at a level where you would want him to not be renewed. So I think what I would just encourage you to do is think sort of big picture about that and about how you approach the ratings, particularly this year, as it has been um, a, not a normal year and not a normal process. Um, so I would I would encourage you to think that way as you complete the the um, results of or complete the form and think about that holistically with regard to the superintendent. And I'm happy to answer any questions that people have regarding the standards or specifically why um, the super or about the process um, that might help people get to a point where they feel com confident in what they they what chose as far as the superintendent and the ratings are concerned. Great. And I don't know if Dr. Connors has anything she she would like to add. No, you you were very thorough, Carrie. I'm just I'm um, not surprisingly I'm just here to support um, the school committee members and answer questions and clarify um, anything that we can to help you in this process. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you both for for coming and and you know for for that. Uh, is anybody? And I want to say we've got four responses and we've got four out of eight remaining. Um, and so we need to get this done. Does any member of the committee want to ask? Uh, Judy, I'm sorry. I saw your hand. Go right ahead. Okay, I just wanted to uh, congratulate Dr. Connors on her uh, doctorate. Mm -hmm. Because I don't think the school committee ever congratulated her. So I'd just like to formally congratulate her on her, I think it's called the doctorate that she got. Yes, She's yes. now Thank doctor. You. Thank you, Mrs. Sullivan. I appreciate it. Yay. Thank you. <laughs> yes, congratulations. When, when was that official? Uh, April 2nd uh, at 2.12 in the afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> Who's counting? Yep. Who's counting, right. <laughs> right, right. You definitely weren't counting down at all. No, right? no, it was it was quite a momentous occasion. It was uh, anticlimactic as it was uh, via Zoom, so not a traditional defense, but uh, defended nonetheless. That's a lot of hard work. Okay. Hard work. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, you know, and I, I, I'm sorry that I, yeah, I, I knew you were working on that because we even talked about it at one point a few years back. And so, um, geez, I'm thinking about how long ago that was and just how much time you put into it. So yes. And you, Mark, you were very helpful in my, that was one of my first projects in my program too, was the interview um, that you helped me with. So that was very early on. <laughs> yes, it was, it, it, but it was, it was my pleasure and I'm glad I could help and uh, I'm glad to, to hear you're over the finish line now. Yes, thank you. So, so awesome. Mr. D'Agostino, if I could also offer, I have um, had some individual conversations with um, some individual members um, about sort of um, helping them talk through some of the ways in which they've come to their um, conclusions. If that's helpful for me to, to sit with any one member and help them um, to complete the form, um, Michelle and I would be very willing to do that. I'm certain, I don't wanna speak for her, but I know that we, um, we've we worked on this for a long time. So we have no problem with doing that. So if an individual member um, wants to reach out to me, I'm happy to do that and provide any kind of support in that way that we can to help sort of just bring this bring this to a closure and sort of move into the next um, cycle for the superintendent. Yes, yeah, absolutely. I agree, Carrie. I'm certainly willing, more than willing. All right, well, we certainly really appreciate the the help and you guys willing to, to offer some 
guidance on that. And, um, you know, I think it, it's, and I, and I know some of the newer members were, you know, this is a, I think your first time you do this, this is a tough process. You don't have a lot of experience in general. And now throw into that, we have a very abnormal year, you know, that we're looking at. And, and so it's just, a, it's tough to do. Keep in mind, I would say to, to those that haven't done it yet, keep in mind that yes, there is the question, the, the questions are framed a certain way. Um, and one person had asked if the questions could be tweaked at all. And my understanding uh, from researching that is that they cannot be, they have to be pegged to the goals, um, uh, the superintendent goals. So we can't really adjust those questions. They have to be with what they are. Yep. However, the tool does allow us a box that will expand as big as you want it, I believe, to opine on the, the, that question and why you gave whatever score you give on that, on that um, uh, particular question. So you can freeform add in anything that you think is important. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, uh, and, and we encourage that, certainly. Um, it, it just, it adds greater feedback um, for the superintendent, certainly to understand, you know, why the rating is what it is, but it also, I think very importantly provides um, members of school committee to really voice um, their opinions, their concerns, um, their findings as to the superintendent's performance. So that's certainly um, very much encouraged. It yeah. might help people work through and feel better about this process if they're feeling uncomfortable or feel like, but I need to be able to explain why I gave this rating. They have that opportunity. Right, right. And I think that's important for, for like any, you know, anybody who's doing the evaluation to remember, even if, you know, again, you're struggling with the fact that the questions are pegged to goals that obviously things had to change because of COVID, you have the opportunity to, you know, elaborate on, on that. Mm -hmm. And, and, and I, as I did, I took full advantage of that box there. <laughs> yeah. And one of the things I would suggest is that the PowerPoint that we presented at one of the meetings was very, um, it, it had bulleted a lot of things that had happened in both pre-COVID and also after COVID response. And I think that um, is the most helpful document as you complete this. Um, and I see Judy shaking her head. And I think that as you complete this, if you can look at that as a tool to refer to, it will really help you in sort of understanding uh, or coming to a rating with regard to what how the how the whole the big picture that I was referring to before sure. um, and I think that's a really helpful tool um, as you talk about the kinds of evidence that's out there um, are regarding the superintendent's performance right all right um, nope does anybody else have any questions about the superintendent evaluation Tim no no nothing Oh, okay. Sorry, the, the the box on the Zoom shifted down to you, and I, I so I thought you were starting to say something. <laughs> um, no, no, I'm all set with it. Okay, Judy, your hand is up again. Go ahead. Okay, I just wanted to say that yes, that um, section that Carrie just talked about that gives all the samples of before COVID, after that really helped me with yeah. anything that I wanted to write. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it is. That was, that was a really good thing. I think that was on one of the handouts. Yeah, it is very hard to just use that form and answer those questions, I think, respond to those prompts. And that might be where people are kind of struggling is if, if you're just looking at that form in isolation without the PowerPoint, it's hard to, to respond to those things. So if, if you, you know, we can certainly um, send you the PowerPoint um, so you don't have to dig through handouts. We can easily share that with you so that it's readily accessible uh, so that you have that beside you as you fill out the form. Right, yeah. Um, all right, so the, the, the other thing I need to stress though is that the, the, the clock has kind of wound down on this. Um, we have four more people who are yet to do the evaluation. We really, really are, um, no, hang on, okay, let Ms. Mendez in. Okay, um, so, okay, she's coming. All right, so I just wanted to say, we really, really are getting to the point, 
you know, where this has got to be done and it's got to, we've got to finish this soon. I would, um, tonight is, is Tuesday. Um, you know, I would really like to see the remaining four of these done by, by the, by the, by the time I wake up Saturday morning, um, because I still have to do my, um, overall summary and put that together. Um, and then we've got to have another contract meeting and present that to the public um, and to Mike. And so there's other things that have to happen here. Um, so if everybody could please make an effort, uh, if you haven't done the evaluation, like I said, there, there's four who have and four who haven't. Um, so, you know, I'm not going to name names, but everybody knows if they've done it or not. If you haven't done it, please do it. You know, again, I'd like to see all eight of them in there by, by the time I get up on Saturday morning. Although keep in mind that I have, you know, a five-year-old, so we do get up early. <laughs> um, but that would be great if we could, if I could have that um, to work on this weekend. Um, does any other, uh, I know Ms. Mendez, you just were, were just joining us. So um, did you have any questions about the evaluation process um, or anything for um, Mrs. Copper, Dr. Connors? Hi, um, sorry for my tardiness. I really thought this was at 5.30. Five is really early. <laughs> but um, so I just have background information. So I think the process um, that Carrie and, um, and Michelle gave, I thought were like, I understood the process. I guess where I'm struggling is evaluating him on background information that I don't have. So I thought this meeting would be more on like all the committee members coming in especially ones that have been here because I've only I was elected in January so I've only been on for like when normal times I say two months and then COVID hit and then we've been on survival mode so I wanted it more to be like just laying the background information on the table so I can get more of a perspective on how to effectively evaluate Mike. Ms. Mendez what what if you could just explain a little more in terms of background information um, that you're looking for that we could help with? So like the information we have from the PowerPoint, right? We yes. have post COVID and then we have like what happened pre COVID from post COVID. So I guess like in, in background information of like in general, like the district, like where it was and where we are now, because mainly the information I'm getting is a district review and that's information I can't really use on evaluation because that's not from the term. So when I spoke to Carrie, she clarified that I'm evaluating him from when he was superintendent officially January until the year of June. So January yes. to June, yep. right? Yes. So I have like background information from, he came in in January and he came in after Kathleen Smith. So like, what was the transition into now? If that makes sense, like background, I feel like I am evaluating him, but it's more on like, because the transition was, in a sense, it wasn't flawless. It's like, I guess the back, so like back, so a lot of the things that I'm evaluating him on, there, there's background info on that, if that makes sense what I'm trying to say. It does. And so I guess I would think about it as, as a teacher perspective, right? So um, when we evaluate teachers, we can only evaluate them on their performance during that school year. We can't bring into account anything that happened prior to that school year. Um, if that makes, you know, if you kind of, it's the same kind of process if you think about it that way. Um, and just focusing on that January to June and the information in the PowerPoint and look at it just very holistically, I think may, may help. Um, and then in the second round, when you evaluate him in year two, you'll have a better, you'll have better backgrounds because you will have seen everything that he started with. So I would say just, just as we do with, with educators and we focus just on the school year, if you just focus on that January to June term, you'll be completely fine um, in supporting, you know, making a rating and then supporting that um, you know, through if you from through any statements you wanted to add into the form um, to support that rating. 
um, you know, the other, yeah, I, I think, I think you're at, you'll add more work to it, to yourself, um, trying to put it into a background context because that's, that was when he was deputy. So I, you're, <clears throat> I completely appreciate your being conscientious like that, but I think just focusing on the January to June will just help you give a holistic um, perspective to his, yeah. to his evaluation. And I think one of the things is that I would um, encourage any member is to not get uh, bogged down by yeah. the minutia of the, of the rubric and what, um, you know, the, the rubric can be a little overwhelming when you start to look at it in conjunction with all of the things that we put in the PowerPoint and how we, and so when we talk about looking at things holistically, look at the way the standard is defined in and of itself, and then what we identified as evidence-based kinds of things in under each standard. And I think if you, if you look at those things um, and then, knowing full well that like I think you and I discussed Cynthia you that that knowing full well that there are things that the superintendent identified he didn't get to work on right when COVID happened right so those are areas that you could identify as things that he needs to continue to work on mm -hmm. right if if you chose a needs improvement rating in any one area that he has to continue that work and that would come in the form of a narrative with regard to any comments you'd put in under that particular standard, if you felt that that rating was um, appropriate. But in the absence of any kind of negative evidence or evidence to the contrary, then the rating is really deemed as, he's really deemed as proficient in that regard, be other than, unless you have evidence to counter that, um, that rating. And to Carrie's point on the ratings, the, the guidance from the state does mention um, proficient obviously is the goal, proficient is the assumed um, performance level. If there are ratings of exemplary needs improvement or unsatisfactory, just as Carrie mentioned, you'd really have to provide that evidence that stands out to say, this is why the superintendent deserves an exemplary, exemplary rating or this is why we're deeming his performance mm -hmm. in this particular standard or goal as needs improvement or unsatisfactory. But I think Carrie just summed it up beautifully. In absence of that evidence, the, the um, standard is proficient. Any, um, anything else? Cynthia, you. I guess I spoke a little bit about Carrie with this, but I guess um, my other struggle was, um, so I know I have to look at it as an educator perspective and we can only like, evaluate what so I guess like what I'm trying to say is so January happens March happens there's only two months that I really saw my leadership in normal times whatever that means and then March the district shut down so because we've been on survival mode from March until now and we continue to be on survival mode more of his push and leadership has been just trying to be above water so the language can you hear me am I Mm -hmm. It's very faint. It's very faint, yeah. Um, is this better? Yes. Yeah. I had all my paperwork on my computer. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I guess what I'm trying to say is like, the language that we have, the evaluation, is very much as if we were evaluating him during normal time. Normal time. Mm -hmm. So how do... So I know like Mark gave me advice. He said there's like a, there's like a, like um, at the end towards the evaluation, you can write, like you can write different things. And you know, for each one, you guys mentioned that if we were to give him a needs improvement or unsatisfactory, that needs to be, or an exemplary, that needs to be backed with evidence. Because as of now, we're, 
it's interpreted as he should be proficient. So if we give him anything either higher or below than that, then there needs to be evidence to back that up. So I guess because of COVID and because we've been on survival mode and the language is very normal, how do we go about that? And I think also just because of the shortened term of his evaluation um, cycle, um, that it's very challenging to, I, I would think it would be very challenging to, unless the committee is moving again to, to remove the superintendent or not renew his contract, um, the, the, the shortened period of time in which we are evaluating him, it would become very challenging to, because the, it could be viewed, and I'm just saying that in, it could be viewed that he hasn't had enough time to actually meet these goals or become um, exemplary or proficient because of these things happening, right? Because of the shift and the change. So, so the, the, the opposite is also true. So what you would say is that it's a shortened period of time in which we've, we're asking you to evaluate the superintendent. So does, does that warrant um, a negative rating, an unsatisfactory or needs improvement and I don't view needs improvement as on, as as a negative. I view everybody can improve. So I don't I don't want you to think that I think a needs improvement is is a negative rating because I do not. Especially with someone within their first three years, I would never say that that's negative. But I do think that you would need to give him that constructive feedback about how he goes about improving that rating. That that would be incumbent upon the committee to decide what those things are that the superintendent has to do differently in order to get to proficiency if, if a, a needs improvement happens in any one of those standards. Um, but I think that you're in a unique situation where you will have an opportunity to be more thorough, and I don't wanna say you're not being thorough, but to be more thorough in a full cycle, year of a cycle, which you have right now, which is during COVID, and you're going to have what what it looks like in terms of in the spring. So I think that I, I would cut yourself some slack with regard to that um, in, as you sort of move through this process because it has been such a condensed cycle. So I could mention, you have the, I see in your papers, do you have the, a copy of the PowerPoint? I, so I just pulled it up and I was looking at um, your your papers may not be numbered, but it's district goal two, organizational efficiency and effectiveness, it's probably page 11 if they're numbered. Yeah. So if, if you look at that, for example, right, he the superintendent's goal is there and it's connected to standard two, right? And then the next slide are basically bullets of evidence where the superintendent has said, this is evidence of how I am working towards meeting that goal. And that evidence is connected to that standard. So if you looked at that slide for district goal two and even for you know standard two, there's kind of all of your evidence of as a leader in this district, this is what superintendent Thomas has done to um, under, the, under the standard of management and operations and his goal of organizational efficiency. Based on what he has presented here as evidence, how would I rate his leadership or his progress towards that goal? And so may, maybe that becomes your question for, to, for yourself kind of as you think through this. I know there are the prompts in the form itself because that's the standard form that it has to be, but to help you kind of make sense of this, if you say, all right, Here's his goal, here's the standard or standard it's connected to, and here's the evidence that he's saying demonstrates his progress towards his goal and his level of proficiency. How do I rate that? And that might, you know, in, like Kara said, in this very complicated world of, of a shortened, you know, traditional term and a, and a COVID term, maybe that will help, help um, move you through this without all of that noise, if you will, and getting caught up in that. Yeah. And I also think it's important to point out that it's progress towards goals, right? Yeah. You're not, we're no one saying or suggesting that it's about meeting, having right. met the goals currently. It's about progress towards the goals. So with regard to that, it, kind, it, it allows you that flexibility that in the next cycle, hold on a minute, if these goals are similar, 
right? Then wait a minute. We said we were making progress here and now either that progress has stopped or we've mm -hmm. met that goal or we haven't made enough progress. So when I say let yourself off the hook a little, I say that you have that opportunity in the next full cycle to address those areas of deficiency to an even greater extent. And, and you may even consider you know, given the fact that we pivoted to COVID and most of the superintendent's first year has been in, in the midst of a global pandemic, you may even think, well, wow, you know what? This superintendent knocked it out of the park in management and operations because of the physical way he had to move this district to, to with transportation or, or um, excuse me, deployment of devices, arranging of food distribution. I mean, when you think of a standard, right? I'm like, all right, and start to compartmentalize a little bit. So while we're talking holistically, there's there's also that opportunity for you to break it down and say, let me just look at this standard and this evidence. How did he do? And oh, look, that standard's connected to district goal two and district goal three. So if I think he did, he performed in this manner, then I'm going to say he's making progress towards that goal. I talk my I talk to myself a lot when I'm doing these with teachers, <laughs> you know, and as I'm preparing those evaluations, because we can get caught up in that language and it it starts to take away from wait, what is what is the real picture here that I'm seeing in the superintendent's leadership in the district? You know, and I don't know if this is helpful at all, but I'll, I'll throw it in there. Just to give an example from one of my own answers on the evaluation, if you're looking at student learning outcome, ensure students have access to high quality instruction and in an environment that prepares them for college and career, reflects their perspectives on curricula, extracurricular opportunities, facilities, and other issues impacting their learning. Well, you know, again, tough to evaluate on that in this environment that we're in, so I said met, and again, you get to you get to uh, elaborate on that, right? As will be the case with all the evaluation points, very difficult to measure during this pandemic. To the degree possible, I feel the superintendent met this goal. He had to, on a moment's notice, with schools suddenly closed, find a way to educate 16,000 students. Brockton was not a one-to-one -one district. Under the superintendent's leadership, we rolled out remote learning on paper and also had to work out distribution of these materials, et cetera. So you can say yeah met and then here's the you know elaborate you know on and and talk about how the pandemic relates to it all i i like that point mr d'agostino that really connects the this was his goal in in the traditional sense mm -hmm. and then here's actually how he worked to tr still try to meet that goal to the best of his ability in the midst of a pandemic. So th I think that's a great perspective to right. bring and using that text box is valuable. Right. All right, Any, anything else? Um, Judy, you had your hand up. I just wanna, Cynthia, you, do you have anything else or are you, I don't wanna. Oh, we can't hear you. You guys, oh my goodness. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I computer all day. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the computer's tired. It's trying to tell us something. <laughs> no, but I said, thank you. I think I'm good for now. Okay. 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 Reach we'll out reach if out. you need to. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely, reach out. All right, Mrs. Sullivan, you've been patiently waiting. The floor is yours. Okay, I just two comments. I just wanted to um, say that Mrs. Kopp and Dr. Connors did give us a document that explained the transition from Superintendent Smith to Superintendent Thomas. There is a document in there in the handouts that explains how Mike handed over the job, to, I mean, Kathy did to Superintendent Thomas. Um, also, oh, I get the other thing I was gonna say now, huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I uh, also um, what Mark was saying about this still was because Cynthia was saying something about from March on was COVID, but there was still a whole lot of work that was being done in the district 
you know, implemented by the superintendent. So the district wouldn't have moved forward with all those things without them, mm -hmm. implementing and making sure things move forward. So just because there was a pandemic in March, I think there was more work done by the superintendent and his team than before. So just two, two comments, that was all I wanted to add in. Thank you, Judy. You have You're done welcome. many of these evaluations, so we certainly <laughs> appreciate your, your feedback because you and, and several of our other members are quite experienced and more so than even I on, on doing these. Right, and you don't have to add a comment. You can just evaluate, you know, put the mark. You don't have to add a comment. Um, you know, if you don't feel comfortable or you don't have to have a comment for every single one. I didn't leave a comment for every single one. You can just evaluate with the mark and then you don't have to explain. Because someone else probably did in another one, you know. True. Another member might have already done it and it, it will be explained once we publicly go public with it. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Anybody else? Mayor Sullivan. Thank you. Uh, I just got on. I'm not a tech savvy guy. I was on my phone, so I finally joined you. And uh, so a couple of things that some of the committee members not, may not be aware of in terms of my interaction with Mike and I submitted this information. So um, Mike uh, participated uh, in a weekly meeting with myself and Aldo and Troy for the CARES Act. So without Mike, we wouldn't have gotten the seven million bucks for the one to one laptops. Uh, Mike also participated every Tuesday with me and the state delegation, the three reps and the state senator. We've peeled it back. Now it's every other Tuesday uh, to talk about uh, Chapter 70 and the funds that the schools will be getting. Uh, and then really, I mean, the, the, the CARES Act uh, is ex extremely important. But uh, in terms of his interactions with Desi and with, with Commissioner Riley, and I was on you know many of those Zooms as well. So, again, just it's day to day. Everybody has their own uh work and their jobs and but i just wanted to pass that on i mean i captured it in my evaluation but there's definitely a lot of things that previous superintendents didn't have to deal with because of covid uh and mike i will say uh stepped up and was a wonderful partner with my office and uh and and really i think created some really beneficial endeavors that other school districts definitely did not uh take advantage of just wanted to pass that on thank you thank you mayor all right any other questions or comments Hey, Mark. Yes, Mr. Minicello. Oh, I, um, sorry, I just joined um, as well. Um, it's all right. So I'm kind of getting, I, I think I'm kind of getting the gist of, of, of what's happening. Um, I, I know that there was some, um, um, I guess, concern about, you know, circumstances being a little bit different um, this year because of obviously school is not in its regular type of session. So, you know, when you have, a situation, you know, as we do, unfortunately, and, and um, I guess what you have to, you know, consider is how a person is, you know, dealing with a set, set of circumstances that we have before us. And um, certainly a set of circumstances, I would say, in terms of the pluses that um, you can certainly see Michael did very well at is, you know, bringing the unions to the tables in terms of, you know, hashing out agreements so that we could go forward, you know, with regard to having the teachers, you know, in the buildings, having, you know, the, the different, different types of uh, different uh, levels of uh, staff, you know, performing. Um, so, you know, overall, I would say, you know, Mike brings people to the table and, and certainly I think the negotiations and the uh, side agreements and the memorandums of understanding and you know that we've all been sort of witnessing and um, a part of certainly show Mike's strengths in terms of being able to negotiate and relate and um, you know get buy-in basically with um, you know different employees because um, um, you know our, 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 our in Brockton uh, in, in a bunch of us who negotiate with these different unions can tell you how tough uh, you know, the unions here are in Brockton in terms of negotiating. So, I mean, that takes some skill and some, um, uh, I guess, uh, talent, you know. So, so yes, you can't really say, well, you know, circumstances being what they are, you know, we, we don't get to observe 
you know, might perform, you know, sort of, you know, with, with everyday normal um, affairs because, you know, the kids aren't in, in schools and employees aren't doing what they normally do, but yet, you know, with regard to getting the technology off the ground, making sure that, uh, you know, getting the, uh, you know, numbers of employees up to where we need to with regard to you know, servicing these, these, um, you know, the, the, these computers and tablets and all this stuff and getting the unions on board. I mean, you know, that, that took a lot of effort and skill. So, you know, I guess, I think all I want people to do is, you know, sort of think back and consider what there are uh, things, what are the things that we can, you know, say, hey, yeah, you know what, to get where we are today, we don't like where we are today. Obviously, everyone doesn't in, in the state, but, you know, we, we, we are getting it done. Um, and, um, you know, part of getting it done is obviously having someone at the top that can relate to, uh, you know, and work with the mayor, work with the unions, work with, uh, you know, the school committee. And, you know, you know we, we do not have a school committee that is, uh, you know, at war with our administration, like in many other communities, you know, uh, out there, especially, uh, uh, you know, in Sharon, up in Salem, where Kathy Smith was and all that good stuff. So, so I guess you, you need to consider all that in, uh, you know, in, in doing your evaluation. So I'll, I'll shut up now. So. All right. Thank you, Tom. I, I appreciate again, you know, you've again, like Judy done many, many, many of these evaluations. So we certainly appreciate your, uh, your insight and your experience. Um, anybody else have anything Question, comment related to the superintendent's. Uh, yes, Tim. Uh, can you hear me? I can. I just wanted to. I just wanted to give a little comment. And the comment was, we started in January. Everything was gung ho. We were. Mike Thomas went right to the board. And he hired, if I'm not mistaken, like over 100 teachers and 100 other people. I mean, uh, 10 other people as well. And my feeling is this, that I personally was thankful that Mike Thomas was superintendent at the time. I really don't think anybody else could have handled what he handled. Nobody in their right mind would have ever dreamt that a, a pandemic like this would hit us. No kids in school. Uh, we didn't have the computers. On top of the, the shootings and everything else, I think Mike Thomas was number one in the way he handled every single thing that came down the pike. And I'm just glad to say I'm proud that he was there to handle it. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, uh, Tim. Again, you know, appreciate your your thoughts and insight on this as a, as a long-term member of the committee. Um, all right, if there's nothing else or no other comment, um, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. All right, we have a motion to adjourn by Mrs. Sullivan, seconded by Mr. Sullivan. Before I call the roll, I wanna once again, um, Thank uh, Mrs. Kopp and Dr. Connors for joining us tonight and for all the support you're giving the committee in getting this process completed. And I want to remind the committee, please, 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 this has got to get done. So the four of you that haven't done it, please have this done um, before you go to bed on Friday so that I can start my part of this on Saturday morning. Um, I, I, we, I, we, we got to get this done. Um, so. All right. Uh, with that having been said, I'll call the roll on the motion to adjourn. Mayor Sullivan. Yes. All right. Vice Chair D'Agostino is a yes. Mrs. A Ms. Asak. Yes. Mrs. Mendez. Yes. Mr. Minicello. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mrs. Sullivan. Yes. Mr. Sullivan. Yes. All right. Thank you for your time. See you all in about five minutes.